This is Ride News Now. I'm Allison Hayslip. Here's the latest in all things mobility. Every car maker is going electric, and Mazda is no different. Except it is. Kinda. Mazda made a name for itself with its RX sports cars powered by Wankel rotary engines. However, the Japanese brand has essentially given up on the odd engine for environmental reasons. Since then, Mazda has had an identity crisis. How does it stay true to its passion for peculiar power plants while also meeting stringent emissions laws? Mazda's answer? Go electric. But at the same time, embrace diesel. You know, the fuel that's become persona non grata since the VW Dieselgate scandal? Company CEO Akira Marumoto recently said that Mazda will release its first EV next year. And by 2030, its entire lineup will offer some form of electrification. Unlike other automakers, though, Mazda doesn't see EVs as a cure-all. It believes large SUVs are best powered by diesel engine electric motor combos rather than going all electric. But that's a bit like saying it's okay if R. Kelly remains at the top of the charts so long as he sticks to duets. You're kind of missing the much bigger issue. Rotary engine fans will be delighted to know that Mazda hasn't entirely thrown in the towel on the Wankel. Marumoto revealed the engine may return as a range extender for future EV models. You stay weird, Mazda. What's an ideal first car for a teenager? It's a question as old as the automobile itself. Well, ride contributor Nick Janes recently argued that the perfect car for a teenager is an electric vehicle. Shocking, right? Looking at the market of early EVs from 2012 to 2015, Nick identified several models, including the Nissan Leaf, Chevrolet Spark EV, and Mitsubishi i Miev, among a few others, that would make ideal first cars. Most of those aging EVs can now be purchased from $5,000 to $8,000, making them financially accessible. When new, these cars inspired range anxiety in their owners, capable of just 60 to 80 miles per charge. But what was once a liability is now a benefit. Benefit. Nick suggested that the limited range makes EVs ideal for teen drivers, it keeps them close to home. And once they are home, with recharge times between 8 and 24 hours, they're home for a while. Moreover, Nick believes that indoctrinating Generation Z to EVs is the ideal way to ensure eco-friendly transportation grows in popularity. Once a young driver gets hooked on electric vehicles, they'll never look back. You can read Nick's full opinion piece now on Ride.Tech. Let's say you're driving your electric truck off-road in the wilderness somewhere. Suddenly, you realize you're running low on charge. What do you do? Do you fire up your gasoline-burning Honda generator to charge your EV off dino juice? Do you hope you're strong enough to push your truck off the trail when the battery eventually conks out? Or do you perhaps pray for a strategic lightning strike to your truck's charge port in the hopes that it will give you enough power to get home, perhaps to 1985? These are the sort of quandaries facing would-be all-electric off-road adventurers. Thankfully, upstart electric automaker Rivian has a solution. Rivian to Rivian, or vehicle to vehicle, charging. In a recent interview, Rivian CEO RJ Scaringe revealed that Rivian vehicles will be able to share charge with one another. You connect the two vehicles and then I could hand you some electrons, he said, likening the off-road EV charging dilemma to finding a gas station on Antarctica. So there you have it. If you plan to take your Rivian off-road, just be sure to bring a second Rivian with you. Easy peasy. For more tech news, join us over at Ride.Tech and be sure to follow us at Ride Tech News on your social platform of choice. Thanks for watching. If you like what you see, please like and subscribe. Also, head to Ride.Tech for stories, reviews, and more news.